Before we get into today's game, I want to talk about the sponsors for my channel. Card Conduit is the best way to sell your unused magic cards. Whether you've got a box of unsorted bulk, or a complete and alphabetized set, there's a great option for everyone. With a payout averaging 19% better than using any one buy list, and that's after fees are applied, you can rest assured you'll get the best bang for your buck. If you're a skeptic like me, their easy customer service and detailed reports make the whole interaction transparent and safe. And if you use the affiliate link in the description below, or the promo code MTGMUDSTA, you'll save 10% off their fees. And 401 Games, Canada's one-stop shop for trading cards, board games, and hobby supplies. Not to mention an easy to use and great online buy list. And if you use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, your first purchase of MTG sealed and singles will be 5% off. And Dragon Shield, the strongest sleeves for your strongest deck. So be sure to use the code MUDSTA or the affiliate link down below to save 5% on your next order. I also want to give you a quick update on the video release schedule for this week. I'm getting to reveal a Bloomboro deck on the 18th, which happens to coincide with one of my normal releases. As a result, I don't want to have two videos fighting over each other, so I'm just going to post the front. So I'm just going to post the Thursday gameplay on Friday. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's patron shoutout goes to Amy. Thanks, Amy, for supporting me through Patreon. In today's game, we've got Arja, Matt, and John returning, with us playing some new decks and trying to battle it out to see who's got the best one. Arja continues to play his Ashnod deck despite the fact that I have no idea what it does, and he keeps two swamps, Haunt of the Dead Marshes, Oppression, Explorer's Scope, Blood Soaked Champion, and a Mimic Vat. Matt is playing his Dungeons and Dragons Doric deck, keeping Kulvori God of Kinship, Three Forests, Legolas Greenleaf, Arast of the Endless Web, and a Beast Within. John is playing his Rona deck, keeping Karn's Bastion, Two Islands, Swamp, Tezzeret Betrayer of Flesh, Grand Architect, and Master Transmuter. Last but not least, I'm taking my Corum deck out for a spin, keeping Lunar Frenzy, Underrealm Lich, Mountain, Command Tower, Forest, Matslanti the Great Door, and a Faithless Looting. Arja wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays a Swamp. He then pays one black for Ashnod and passes to Matt. Matt's got a forest for turn, and passes after that. I draw, play a mountain for turn, and pass to John. John also has a basic, playing an island, and passing. Arja's turn has him playing a swamp, and casts a haunt of the dead marshes. He scries one, and bottoms it, and moves to combat. He swings Ashnod at Matt for one, sacrificing the haunt on attack and getting to make a power stone. Matt then takes the one, and in his post-combat main phase, Archer then casts a blood-soaked champion, passing to Matt after that. Matt's got a force for turn, and then pays two for a ring heart crest, passing to me. My turn is quite quick, with a command tower, and I then make a red mana, casting Faithless Looting, drawing two, and discarding two. John plays a Swamp, and then pays zero for a Mana Crypt. He then casts Karn the Great Creator, and upticks him to destroy Arja's Power Stone. With nothing else, John passes. Arja draws and plays a Swamp. He pays three for Oppression, and then moves to combat. He swings Ashnod at Karn, sacrificing the Blood Soaked Champion, making another Power Stone, and Karn then takes one. With nothing else, Arja passes. Matt's got a forest return, and he then casts Legolas Greenleaf, discarding a card to Oppression from casting a spell. After that, Matt passes. I draw, and play a forest. I play out Matt's Lanty, forgetting that Karn pretty much shuts it off. I discard a card to Oppression, and pass after that. John wins his Crypt Flip, and then draws for turn. He plays a Seed of the Side Nod, and then casts Tezzeret Batyr of Flesh. He upticks the Walker, drawing two, and discarding a Master Transmuter. He then casts Soul Ring, discarding another card. John continues, casting a Walking Ballista, and then upticks Karn to nuke another Power Stone. He passes after that. Arja's got a Swamp for turn, and he goes to combat, swinging Ashnod at Karn again, and Karn takes one. In his post-combat main phase, 
Arja then brings back the Haunt of Dread Marshes, scries one, and passes. Matt draws and goes straight to combat. He swings Legolas at Arja for two, and gets a card off the trigger. In his post-combat main phase, Matt then plays Beast Within, destroying Karn, and passing to me. With Karn gone, I have an opportunity to activate Matt's Lalanti, which, spoiler alert, is the only time I do it for the rest of the game. I draw, miss my land drop, and pass. John loses his mana crypt flip, taking three, and then drawing. He casts Rona, who comes in and exiles Karn. He then recasts Karn, and once it's out, upticks the walker and targets the Ringheart Crest. He then downticks Tezzeret on the seat of the Synod, and he goes to combat. John swings the seat and the beast token at Archer for seven, who takes the hit. After that, John passes. Arja draws and goes to combat. He swings Ashnod at Matt, sacrificing the haunt for another power stone, and Matt then takes one. Arja then passes, and during his end step, I cycle a greater Tanuki, going into my library to find a swamp to put to field. Matt's main face has fight rigging coming in, and he gets to hide away a card. Going to combat, he puts a plus one plus one counter onto Legolas, and then swings it at John. John takes the hit for three, and Matt draws a card, and with nothing else, Matt passes. My main face has me drawing and flashing back Faithless Looting, discarding Anger to the Oppression Trigger. I then draw two, and discard two, and pass after that. John loses his Mana Crypt Flip, taking three, and drawing. He uptakes Tezzeret, drawing two, and then discards a Hangerback Walker. He then casts a Mystic Forge. He continues by casting Chief of Foundry, and he then goes to combat. He swings the animated Seat and Rona at Arja, and Arja just takes the hit. John then passes, and during his end step, Arja reanimates the Haunt of Dead Marshes, scrying one as it comes in. Arja draws and casts an Explorer's Scope, discarding Reassembling Skeleton to his Oppression Trigger. He then activates the skeleton's ability from the graveyard, bringing it back onto the battlefield tapped. With nothing else, Arja passes. Mathieu draws and plays a forest. He casts Doric and goes to find another forest, and gets to put a plus one plus one counter onto Legolas. Going to combat, Legolas goes at me for five, which I take, and Matt draws a card. Matt then passes turn. I draw and cast Cultivate. Finding a basic to the field, and then playing the mountain I found as my land for turn, and I pass to John after that. John wins his mana crypt flip, and then draws. He casts a commander sphere, and floats a blue off of it, and then sacrifices it to draw. He then casts treasure mage, and goes to grab Bolas' citadel with it. John then continues by upticking Tezzeret, drawing two, and discarding a darksteel citadel. He passes after that. Arja's turn is very quick, as he draws, casts a cunning rhetoric, and passes to Matt. Matt's main phase has him casting Oiva Pashiri, which lets him put a plus one plus one counter onto Legolas. Going to combat, he puts another counter onto Legolas with Fight Ringing, which meets the requirements for Fight Ringing, and allows him to cast Mending of Dominaria. This has Matt milling two, and bringing back Toski. He then swings Legolas and Doric at John. Matt pays the 2 to flip Doric, and gives Legolas an extra plus 2 plus 2. Before moving to blocks, John activates Walking Ballista, adding a plus 1 plus 1 counter to it thanks to the discount that Tezzeret provides. He then triple blocks Legolas with the Seed of the Synod, the Beast Token, and the Chief of the Foundry, as well as throwing Rona and the Treasure Mage in front of Doric. Matt kills the Ballista and Seat with Legolas, and 2 Doric damage tramples over. With nothing else, Matt passes. I draw and cast Corum. I then go to combat and swing my commander at John, and everyone mills their top card. John responds by activating Mystic Forge to exile the Chain Veil off the top, and we then mill our top cards, and Corum is an 11 11 thanks to Multani, Mero Sorcerer, being in my graveyard. John double blocks, 
but I cast Lunar Frenzy to give Corum First Strike and Trample. John ends up only taking 5 though, and after combat, I then play a Force that I milled off of Corum as my land for turn, and pass. John draws and passes his Mana Crypt Flip. He then casts Bolas' Citadel. He pays 6 life to cast Tezzeret Master the Bridge off the top, and then continues casting Ethereum Sculptor with the Citadel, and then playing a Mistfolk Bridge off the top, and then finally cast an Aetherflux Reservoir with the Citadel as well. John then continues by exiling his top card with the Mystic Forge and losing one, and then casts an Empowered Auto Generator thanks to the Citadel, and actually nets one life because of Aetherflux Reservoir. He then casts Titan Forge off the top and gets two, and then a Trophy Mage, gaining three, and he goes to find a Master of Ethereum. John then follows up with a Foundry Inspector, gaining four, and once that's out, he upticks Tezzeret to draw two and discard one. John then plays Rings of Bright Hearth, then Ugin the Spirit Dragon, gaining life each time. John then moves to using his Planeswalkers, and he upticks Tezzeret, draining us for 11 with the Master of the Bridge, and he then upticks Karn, but doesn't have any targets. He wraps up his turn by downticking Ugin for 5, which exiles most of the board. With nothing else, he passes. Arja draws, but with nothing to do against John, just passes to Matt. Matt's main phase has Toski coming in, and he passes. During his end step, I cast Worldly Tutor, going to find a Rampaging War Mammoth and putting it on top before moving to my turn. I draw and cycle the War Mammoth, putting 4 into the X, and I get to target the Rings of Bright Hearth, Aether Flux Reservoir, Mystic Forge, and Bolas' Citadel. The artifacts get blown up, and I draw a card and then pass to John. John wins his Crypt Flip and draws. He recasts Rona and exiles the Bolas' Citadel with it as it enters, and then recasts the Citadel. He then starts his Citadel turn, this time with a Tezzeret Agent of Bolas. Upticking him, looking at his top 5, and revealing an Everflowing Chalice. He then casts the Chalice for 1, and then upticks his other Tezzeret to drain us for 7. He then upticks Ugin, dealing 3 to Mathieu. John then downticks Karn, returning the Chain Veil from Exile to his hand, and he passes after that. We've basically all got one turn at this point, and Arja draws and casts Anraker the Traveler, which isn't going to help us at all, and the most helpful thing he can do at this point is just pass to Matt. Mathieu draws and plays a Forest, and then politely asks to get a card off of Toski. Arja welcomes it with open arms, and Arja then takes the one. Unfortunately though, it's not helpful, as we see Matt casting a Rasta after combat, and then just passing to me. I draw, and cast Corum, and then move to combat. I swing Corum at John because of anger in my graveyard, and everyone mills one. John is then easily able to chump Corum with Rona since it doesn't have trample, and I then play a mountain that I milled after combat, and pass to John. John wins his Mana Crypt Flip, draws, and casts the Chain Veil in his main phase. He's then able to uptick the Master of the Bridge twice, which is easily enough to drain us out, and he wins the game. Game review time. This game was 42 minutes and 55 seconds, and honestly I thought it could have gone a lot longer despite the fact that there was an overwhelming presence of Planeswalkers from John's side of the board. He had a root routinely consistent, brutal lockdown effect on most of the board. Karn shutting off the artifacts was one thing, but I think as soon as the Tezzeret started coming out, things were quickly going downhill. I know a lot of people are going to say that the Mana Crypt probably propelled him into the stratosphere, and yeah, you're right, he had a bit of a greedy hand, and the Mana Crypt definitely helped, but I think the big thing was probably the Mystic Forge allowing him to manipulate the top of his library, and those huge turns of the Bulls of Citadel. Arja's Ashna deck, I keep joking, I'm not too sure what it does, but it seems like it's just based around sacrificing creatures and getting power stones, and then probably casting big spells. 
Unfortunately, a lot of the creatures in his deck are usually pretty small and have some way to recur themselves from the graveyard, which means that they don't have a massive impact. I think had he been a bit more aggressive early on with attacking Karn, things might have gone a little bit better, but I think what really, really hurt the table was that oppression. I know that his deck really has like one-sided advantage against it, but it really ate a lot of answers from Matt, John, and myself. Matt's deck is cool. I like Doric. I like that she pumps. It kind of reminds me of a Kulvori deck I tried out, which is very Legendary Matters. It definitely seems to be focused around that. But again, he just didn't draw into pieces that allow him to attack efficiently. He only got to swing once with Doric, which unfortunately for his deck is not what he wants to be doing. He typically wants to be going hard from the get-go. And yeah, that was pretty rough. Corum has continued to impress me. Um, it's really easy to filter into big creatures and then dump them into my graveyard. If not, there's a lot of cards that have some kind of cycle or channel that basically have 6 plus power and give me some kind of added effect. I think that Rampaging War Mammoth is probably one of my favorites since it gives me a card and can potentially blow up some opponent's stuff. But, you know, it's always fun to have a Multani pumping up my power to like 11 or 20 or who knows how big. I almost did this in one shot, but unfortunately I just flubbed. It's unfortunate that we couldn't stop John, but his deck was consistent, and his engines were firing, and it just sometimes happens. And, you know, it can be fun in itself itself. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, but it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.